The Citizen Report is a production of New Shannon Media. All content protected under copyright. And welcome to the Citizen Report. I'm John DeShannon, and thank you for joining me tonight. As always, this newscast is real, in-depth American. Thank you so much for joining me. My co-host, David Heller, is off, but I will say in a few moments, there will be a special weather forecast from David Heller in a pre-recorded video that will run on this broadcast rather shortly. Now, before we get to that, I want to, and this will be, by the way, a short broadcast tonight. But I want to, uh, before I, before I toss it to this video from David Heller about the weather, I want to first bring to your attention a couple of things that are developing uh, in recent days. First of which, this is a video courtesy of Aaron Ness. Uh, you're not going to see the video, you're just going to hear part, <clears throat> part of it. And this video is President Donald Trump talking about the vaccine. Now what you need to know... Uh, before we, before I start playing a portion of this, which you, you will not see, but you will hear is one of the companies that is developing this vaccine is called Pfizer. It starts with a P Pfizer. Okay. Now, when you're listening to this, and I want you to listen very, very carefully when you're listening to this video, I want you to pay very close attention to how Trump pronounces Pfizer. Now I'm going to say it again. Pfizer. Now, when you listen to this, it's not going to sound like Pfizer, what Trump is saying, no matter how you dice, slice it or dice it. I don't care if people try to say, oh, well, he has a New Yorker accent or something. Well, even if that be the, even with that consideration, you still have to concede to the fact that it, there's no way you can possibly conceive the notion that he's actually referring to Pfizer, at least not reasonably. So um, I'm going to play for this, and then I've got some analysis uh, after that. So again, just a portion of this video, but I want you to hear this. Listen very, very carefully. Really good news. Today our nation has achieved a medical miracle. We have delivered a safe and effective vaccine in just nine months. This is one of the greatest scientific accomplishments in history. It will save millions of lives and soon end the pandemic once and for all. I am thrilled to report that the FDA has authorized the Pfizer vaccine. We have given Pfizer and other companies a great deal of money, hoping this would be the outcome. And it was. On behalf of the American people, I'd like to thank all of the brilliant scientists, technicians, doctors, and workers who made this all possible. Pfizer and Moderna have announced their vaccine is approximately 95% effective, far exceeding expectations. These vaccines are also very safe. American citizens participated in clinical trials that were far larger than normal and had no serious side effects. The dedicated and independent experts at the FDA meticulously studied the results of the trials, and it has now passed the gold standard of safety. All right, I'm going to stop it right there. Now, um, I was trying to hold the speaker a little bit closer uh, so, you, so to try to make sure you could hear it as well as I could through this method I'm currently using. So um, I was watching the lips, basically. I was watching this portion of Trump's face, generally speaking, when uh, towards the beginning of this video. Um and when he said what's supposed to be Pfizer, okay, um, he literally says Pfizer. And you could, and, and actually, the, um, in my opinion, now I could be totally wrong on this, but his lips literally, like, if you were to uh, forget that Pfizer is a company and all that, it, you couldn't possibly get around hearing Pfizer in that. And um, I want to uh, give a hat tip to my friend Nikki uh, for uh, digging this up. This is one of the Patriot Intelligence Insider posts, or 17 posts, whatever you want to call this, this source. Um, 
this is a post from July. Make sure I get the date right. Uh, yes, uh, July 28, 2018. And, and Anon, uh, and, and the Intelligence Insider will say instead, um, shared a, 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 an anonymous poster that said, quote, no, the truth was not revealed yet. FISA didn't have much impact, to be honest, or there is still something missing to it, which reveals the whole truth. This is what the, you know, Patriot Intelligence Insider has to say underneath this. This is post, by the way, this is post 1745. Interesting, by the way, 17, the, the number in the alphabet, you know what I'm talking about. Trump is the 45th president. So, post 1745. So, I think that's kind of interesting. Anyways, here's what the post reads. FISA equals start. And by the way, FISA equals Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. That's what this uh, website basically clarifies that to mean. FISA equals start. FISA equals immediate comp, I believe that means confirmation, of illegal acts regarding signers. FISA equals immediate um, uh, comp, again, I think that means confirmation, immediate confirmation start of Hussein's spy campaign to Reagan election was based on false info. FISA equals implicate Hillary Rodham Clinton Democrat Party as feeders of false info with the intent of securing mainstream media plus blast insurance. FISA equals implicate senior members of UK, MI5, 6, SIS, US Intel, White House, let's see what that means, F V E Y, uh, Five Eyes, Republican Party, Congress, Senate of known corruption in effort to retain power in rig election plus safeguard event or events by political kill to act while in power given mainstream media fake push Russia in AR. FISA equals ties MSM, mainstream media, heads, TV, behind, corp, to Democrat Party, other foreign heads of state, and co-operation strategy. FISA brings down the House. FOIA, that means Freedom of Information Act, does not include FISA. D-class by POTUS, that's President of the United States, Key parts that factually demonstrate the dirty fake dossier was used as primary source to secure highest level of intel spying on primary Republican opponent, in parentheses it says, plus post-election intel assets for DOM spying on the President of the United States for the Office of the Presidency of the, uh, for the, Office of the, Presidency of the United States of America. Logical thinking, public awareness, FISA, slash spine foundation built huber no spelling errors intended mobile unknown if above okay so that was that post now um a couple other things now i'm looking at some other posts that i'm personally looking at uh this is from let's see here Let's see, I want to make sure I get the most relevant information. Um, okay, December 22nd, 2019, post number 3740 has this to say. It includes a tweet. Um, let me see if the tweet is still available. I'm clicking on it now. Um, okay, I'm not going to read that, but uh, okay. Okay, this is what the post says underneath that link. Something big is coming. And then it contains another tweet, this time to real Donald Trump. And, um, okay, so on December 22nd, 2019, Donald J. Trump, at real Donald Trump on Twitter, had this to say, quote, The Democrats and Crooked Hillary paid for and provided a fake dossier with phony information gotten from foreign sources, pushed it to the corrupt media and dirty cops, and have now been caught. They spied on my campaign, then tried to cover it up, just like Watergate, but bigger. So, um, okay, so what you need to know right now is 
things are moving so quickly right now. By the time this video goes up, I mean, it, it, I wait a few days in between broadcasts and so much develops, it's incredible. Since my last broadcast, we had the Supreme Court ruling, the Supreme Court ruling um, that basically threw out this case regarding Texas suing other states. Now, I was listening to the X-22 report tonight, and what he was getting at was that basically what he's in, what, what it seems to be that Dave X, uh, X-22 report was trying to get at was this was a way, this was actually strategic, because we have all these other cases currently rolling up through the court system towards the Supreme Court. As for this case with Texas, basically it was implied very strongly, actually it wasn't really implied, it seemed, I, I guess you could even say it was basically, like I'm putting it right out here for you to see, um, in the court ruling apparently it, it was... Um, alluded to basically um and actually in the dissent in the dissent in fact before i go any further um let me make sure i get this right because this is just a lot of information and um but but basically what 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 the what it hinges on is a technicality so apparently what texas if i'm understanding this correctly basically it threw out the case because of article because Texas was claiming uh, standing on Article Two, they should have filed under Article Three. Okay, so basically what we have here, and it's <laughs> I'm looking at this page and on the Supreme Court.gov and wow, um, you talk about uh, quite a lot of filings in just a span of a few days, but basically. Um, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm just going to say, basically, what, what you can best think of this is that, basically, we now know what has to be done in the court system. But even disregarding, just disregarding the court case, there are still a lot of ways forward that doesn't even involve, you know, the aforementioned case with the Supreme Court, with Texas and all. Now, there is an executive order. President Trump signed in 2018. In 2018, President Trump signed um, an executive order having to do with um, having to do with the elections with foreign interference. Now, if I'm if I'm citing the same order as other people have been citing in recent days, there is an executive order issued on and it's promulgated on the WhiteHouse.gov website, so you can go look this up as, yourself as well. Issued on September 12, 2018, more than two years ago now. Um, executive order on imposing certain sanctions in the event of a foreign interference in, the United, in a United States election. Now, listen very, very carefully. And I do promise I will be getting to that weather broadcast short, uh, very, very shortly. But here's, here's, what, here's what I want to get at right here. It, this is part, and I'm reading a part of this executive order. Here's what it says, and I quote, Accordingly, I hereby order Section 1A, not later than 45 days after the conclusion of a United States election, the Director of National Intelligence, with consultation with the heads of any other appropriate executive departments and agencies, and then again it says agencies in parentheses, shall conduct an assessment of any information indicating that a foreign government or any person acting as an agent of or on behalf of a foreign government has acted with the intent or purpose of interfering in that election. The assessment shall identify to the maximum extent ascertainable the nature of any foreign interference and any methods employed to execute it the persons involved, and the foreign government or governments that authorize, direct, directed, I should say, sponsored, or supported it. The Director of National Intelligence shall, de shall deliver this assessment and uh, appropriate supporting information to the President, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of the Treasury, the Secretary of Defense, the Attorney General, and the Secretary of Homeland Security. Um, I'm going to keep reading in uh, section B here. Within 45 days of receiving the assessment and information described in, se in section 1A of this order, 
the Attorney General, and the Secretary of Homeland Security in consultation with the heads of any other appropriate agencies and, as appropriate, state and local officials shall deliver to the President, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of the Treasury, and the Secretary of Defense, that's military, a report evaluating with respect to the United States election that is subject of the assessment described in Section 1A. Here's, and this is what it's saying here. Um, and the first point is the extent to which any foreign interference that targeted election infrastructure materially affected the secretary, uh, I should say that, if, let me, let me start that again. I apologize. Uh, Roman numeral one, the, the extent to, to which any foreign interference that targeted election infrastructure materially affected the security or integrity of that infrastructure, the tabulation of votes, or the timely transmission of a election results, and Roman numeral two. If any foreign interference involved activities targeting the infrastructure of or pertaining to a political organization, campaign, or candidate, the extent to which such activities materially affected the security or integrity of that infrastructure, including by unauthorized access to dis disclosure or threatened disclosure of or alter alteration or falsification of information or data. Now, um, I am going to skip down here. This is all, I think this is all would, would otherwise be important to share, but I'm trying to keep this somewhat short. I'm trying to get to this uh, David wanted to do a weather video, so I'm trying to uh, trying to make sure I get to that uh, expeditiously. But this is what I this is another part I want to to include. Okay, section um, section two a all property and interests in property that are in the United States that hereafter come within the United States or that are or hereafter come within the possession or control of any United States person or the following persons are blocked and may not be transferred, paid, exported, withdrawn, or otherwise dealt in. Any foreign person determined by the Secretary of the Treasury in consultation with the Secretary of State, the Attorney General, and the Secretary of Homeland Security, Roman numeral one to have directly or indirectly engaged in, sponsored, concealed, or otherwise been complicit in foreign interference in a United States election. Roman numeral two, to have materially assisted, sponsored, or provided financial, material, or technological support for, or goods or services to, or in support of, any activity described in subse subsection A, Roman numeral one, of this section or any person whose property and interests in property are blocked pursuant to this order or Roman numeral three to be owned or controlled by or to have acted or purported to act for or on behalf of directly or indirectly any person whose property or interests in property are blocked pursuant to this order. Now, um, this is a lot of information. There is other important information, but I'm, uh, due to time constraints, I am not going to read tonight. But let me tell you in brief what this basically means. Um, not exhaustively, but uh, in general. What this basically means is that President Trump, more than two years ago, almost back to the beginning of when the Citizen Report first went on, went on as a college podcast, okay? That far back ago. OK, President Trump put in an executive order that basically says if we determine within 45 days of the election, based on a certain report that he's he's ordering um, from the director of, as I understand, national intelligence. Um, basically, if it's been determined that a person or entity colluded with a foreign government, a foreign agency or whatever to subvert or, you know, interfere with this election. Then, therefore, um, basically what amounts to, in my opinion, to be sanctions are amounted against. And it, I believe it includes even people in this country. Now, that segues to one final point. 
I am not ready yet to go to go on here and say this on the record specifically, but generally, what I will say here right now is that I'm getting information um, on Facebook, particularly, that more. And again, I do not know this to be true. I do not know if this is true. But what people are claiming is that more than 20 governors of this country, that's almost half of this country's governors, have some tie to a Chinese person, as, as that's to say a Chinese agent. Whether or not that involves the elections, I don't know. I cannot verify what I just said to be true, and I'm, I'm very careful to say that because I just don't know right now. But what I am thinking, what my hypothesis is, is that Trump can use this executive order to go after these individuals, not just governors, I mean the low-level people too. And we also know that, um, uh, I believe his name is Scott McKay, I hope, I hope I'm remembering the name right, on YouTube has basically said that the 17 or Patriot Intelligence Insider poster basically has said that the military is the only way forward. And I will add this on one final note. I do not remember where I heard this from, but I do know someone has said that there will come a critical point on January 20th, the, elect the inauguration day, when basically it there's the point in time where you have a transition of power from one president to another, or as I believe, it will actually just be a transition from the first Trump term to the second Trump term, okay? But my point being for, for uh, argument's sake only is that if Biden purports to be inaugurated illegally, of course, um... The military, at some point around that time, will have to hand over the, the things like the nuclear uh, briefcase, uh, the, the the football, basically, and that's basically to say the 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 computer, the laptop that the president has in his um, presence at all times. Basically, and most of you probably understand this, but just in case you don't know, here's a brief. 30 second or less crash course on that. The President of the United States basically has, and this has been the case for decades, a briefcase that basically contains the ability to launch remotely in the, uh, remotely, doesn't matter where he is, the President can launch if needed. If we come under attack and if we have to launch a nuclear weapon, I don't know if that includes other weapons. I just know it has to do with nuclear weapons. The President can remotely, using the code and all that stuff. You know, movies have depicted that for decades. Um, and I'm sure there are uh, facets to that that are highly secretive and we don't know about. But my point being is that basically that is the nature of this thing. At some point, the military has to either make the decision to either keep it on Trump's control or give it to Biden. I believe the military will stay with Trump as long because the military knows what happened. The uh, the full scope of the U.S. intel. They know that the real winner of this is President Donald Trump, period. And um, I believe that in the end, they will. it will be ascertained that they, that they will say, we're not giving this to Biden. He's not the real president. We, being the military, recognize Trump. So I don't think it will come, I don't think it will necessarily come to that in terms of what I believe to be most probable, but that is something on my radar of thinking. So I just wanted to put that out there. But again, as for that over 20 governor deal with China, I cannot verify that. But there are pictures circulating showing governors posing with pictures with, you know, Chinese, I guess people from the Chinese government. I don't know, uh, Chinese, you know, dignitaries, whatever the case may be. I'm not ready to be too specific on that here on this record yet, but I am going. To, I am planning to cover that, assuming it still pans out, assuming that things are on the up and up with uh, with it being uh, ascertainable to be likely true. I will probably come on here and talk about that in the in, in depth. Okay, but for now, just just understand that that claim is being put out there. Whether or not it's true, I don't know, but I can tell you the X twenty two report who I 
who I believe to be very, very credible. Um, he has been talking about it tonight. Um, so just know that. Okay, so on that note, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to a pre-recorded video from David Heller having to do with the weather because he uh, he wanted to do a video on the weather. So here is that. It's about 15 minutes and change, a little over 15 minutes long. And um, so I'm going to hand you over to that now. And in just a moment, uh, you will see that. And then at the end of that, again, a little over 15 minutes, I will come back. Um, I should say, after that 15 minute and so many seconds clip plays out, uh, give or take, uh, I will, you will see me reappear, reappear here and I'll wrap things up for this broadcast. So let's go to David Heller, who filed this report early this morning in Chandler, Oklahoma. Good morning here, everybody. I am David Heller here. Um, of course, I am the uh, chief forecaster and the co-anchor of the Citizen Report. Um, obviously, as you could tell, I'm back after a, a hard semester of college and stuff like that that is off topic. Um, anyway, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, I am recording this um, for the broadcast of the Citizen Report that uh, Jonathan Shannon will present as I have a Discord notification that went, went off. Oops. It's, okay. So somebody must have already joined. So, all right. Anyway, back to this. Uh, we are going to start out with radar here this morning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up radar scope. And we can see all sorts of heavy precipitation developing right now across this general area here of northwest Oklahoma here. Uh, we're talking at times heavy snow um, drifting it, well not quite drifting, but uh, blowing snow at times um, up here in the northwest Oklahoma. And I'll, I'm, I'm just going to tell you this right now. If you have travel plans that take you up through northwest Oklahoma, through the panhandles of Oklahoma and the northern half of the Texas panhandle, through parts of Kansas and Colorado. Don't do it. Just don't, okay? Don't do it. And I'll tell you why. Let's switch radars and go to Dodge City up here in southwest Kansas. This is why we have a band of heavy snow here that is centered across far southwest Kansas, spilling over into parts of the Oklahoma Panhandle, basically running from a, from a quarter from near Guyman through uh, just east of Liberal, uh, south of Plains, Kansas, Mead, Kansas, north of Inglewood, Kansas, Ashland, Kansas, Protection, Kansas, Coldwater, Kansas. Um, Basically, um, what uh, we are dealing with here is a fan of heavy snow that is developing across this region right here. So obviously, travel problems, advising against travel, basically across southwest Kansas this morning. So once again, if you have travel plans up that way, don't do it. Just, just don't. Okay, seriously. Now, as we come down to central Oklahoma, I'm going to change radars. I'm going to go to OKC. We have a heavy band of heavy sleet, thunder sleet even at times being, being reported, and some heavy snow starting to develop across southwest Oklahoma, as you can see, while my thing accidentally decided to zoom in so i'm going to zoom back out and show you guys the big picture um uh, obviously we have let me close this get this out of the way so that way everybody can see what's going on basically right now all of this stuff here i'm just going to draw well drawing is not that great anyway this is the band of heavy precipitation that's falling right now. 
across parts of central and southwest Oklahoma. And all this is moving to the east and northeast with time. Ultimately, all this is going to switch over to all snow across central and southwest Oklahoma. All right. And because of the fact that um, we have uh, concern for heavy precipitation here, I'm going to do this on the fly here. I'm going to pull up Twitter. And as I do that, I am going to uh, share my screen here. A couple things here. Well, actually, here, here it is. Here we go. Now, I'm going to share my screen now. Share my screen now. All right. So, as you can see on this map, we have winter weather advisory that covers so good chunk. I'm going to annotate this so, so I can draw this out. This is a winter weather advisory drawn out like this all right so up here if you're in this chain of blue you are in a winter weather advisory which means we're talking slightly less lesser amounts of snowfall here it's all this stuff down here southeast oklahoma all right my drawing's not that great but who cares at this point i just want to get this information out to everybody here all this is going to be all rain here maybe just maybe if the cold air gets further south enough we may see more winter precipitation further to the south and the winter weather advisory may need to be extended further south however up here we have a winter storm warning that covers oklahoma city includes chandler on up the turner turnpike almost to tulsa northern oklahoma western oklahoma northwest oklahoma and into the panhandle of Oklahoma, which means that we could see a more significant snowfall event within the winter storm warning area. All right. And uh, some of the model data I uh, looked um, so far uh, seem to suggest that um, we could see anywhere from Oh, as low as maybe an inch or two, depending on the mall run you look at, over just the OKC metro area, for example, to as high as six, seven, eight inches of snow, uh, possibly uh, within this corridor that uh, they highlighted the winter storm warning for, somewhere along the Turner Turnpike corridor where the heavy band could, heavy band of snow could set up. And I will say this, considering the fact that some of the model data is suggesting hefty amounts of snow here in this part of eastern Oklahoma, I will not rule out a winter storm warning being extended even further to the east to accommodate the threat of higher amounts of snowfall being possible even into northeastern Oklahoma and spilling over in the northwest Arkansas and parts of southwest Missouri. In fact, over in northwest Oklahoma, there's already a winter storm warning posted uh, in that area. So I would say right now at this point, I would not recommend any travel except maybe to the south, maybe to the south. If you're going to try to go north toward Kansas, forget it. If you're going to try to go toward the Texas Panhandle, forget it. If you're going to try to go toward Missouri or Arkansas, forget it. If you're going to try to go to Colorado, forget it. It's going to be slick. It's going to be hazardous. 
and it's going to be dangerous out there, especially with the blowing snow at times as the precipitation falls as snow as the colder air continues to uh, dig dig itself in. So this is quite frankly another one of those serious winter storms of the year so far. The other one being in October where uh, we had um, an ice storm that um, knocked out a lot of Oklahomans uh, without power. And speaking of power outages, um, hang on just a minute. Let me make sure I have that feed pulled up of the system watch. No, I do not. Okay. I'm going to pull up the system watch. All right. So here is the system watch here right now. Um, at this point, I am going to share my screen one more time. And then I will wrap this up. So here is the system watch here. This is statewide. And as we can see on here, I'm going to annotate this. This number right here. Over 1,100 customers right now are without power. All of these so far appear to be in the OKC metro area right in here i'm going to zoom in on it and get get down into um specifics here so i am going to close this out and zoom in on the three outages zoom in more okay so here's where most of the outages i'm going to zoom in one more level here there we go okay so most of the outages as you can see on this map are centered here in this zone so pretty much near downtown that's where most of the power outages have been so far and there's a pocket up here as well between portland avenue northwest 23rd northwest 39th and meridian so there's basically two pockets right now where the power is currently um, out um, at this time. Now, I'm going to exit this and show you guys the estimated times for when power should be restored. Uh, this one is being assessed right now. That's understandable. Um, 827 is when the power should be restored in this, in this area. And 9.14 this morning is when the power should be restored. I don't think it's going to be a lengthy um, outage this time around like it was back in October with the ice storm. Um, I think the power will be on a lot quicker this time around. And I don't think the power outages is going to be as widespread as it was with the ice storm in uh, October. In fact, I think the power outage threat is very low, very low right now um, at this point. What, what we are mainly concerned about is basically the blowing snow and the increasing amounts of snowfall that's being depicted right now by the models. I'm not even going to share the models with you guys because it's, it's so high that um, I don't want to frighten anybody by showing uh those amounts but what i can tell you is generally speaking central western northern oklahoma um up toward kansas in the panhandles i would say anywhere from three to as high as locally eight nine inches of snow wouldn't be out of the question we're already seeing um pretty significant amounts of snow already falling across southwest kansas so I think they may see um, higher than even eight, nine inches of snow. Um, there's also a pocket in eastern Oklahoma, in the higher terrain of eastern Oklahoma, heading into northwest Oklahoma, or excuse me, northwest Arkansas, excuse me, northwest Arkansas, and the higher terrain out there, another pocket of five, six, seven, eight, nine even 10 inches of snow possible 
uh, out that way as well. And then everywhere else surrounding that, I would say, um, if you go a little, little ways to the south, down toward Chickasha, Norman, Shawnee, Seminole, that way, Ada, two to four inches, and then further to the south, the lesser amounts you go. Um, some places down near Armour, maybe an inch. And then as you get closer to the Red River, most you could see is maybe it does seem mainly a, main, a, mainly a rain event. And then as you get on the other side of Red River in the Texas, it's, a, it's an all rain event. No winter precipitation. It's too warm uh, for that as you get into North Texas, if you're heading that way. So. Um, that is the latest on this winter storm. What you need to know is we have a winter storm warning out for a large chunk of Oklahoma and Northwest Arkansas until six o'clock this evening, along with a winter weather advisory surrounding that. However, I think many areas of Eastern Oklahoma will ultimately get upgraded to a winter storm warning as we progress through the morning hours. So. I will toss this back over to uh, Jonathan in North Carolina. Uh, thank you so much for, tu for tuning in. And as always, we will keep you advised. All right. Thank you, David. Uh, good work as always. So uh, before I wrap up, I want to remind you of our website, thecitizenreport.weebly.com. And I just want to say this in closing. I just want to thank you for tuning into the Citizen Report as always, showing me your support. I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it because uh, I there are days I frankly need that. So I, I truly appreciate that. I really, really do. And I know things look dark right now, and depending on what you depending on what aspects of the media you're looking at. But let me tell you something: the mainstream media does not want you to have hope. That's why I urge you. Beyond just being aware of what's being said, because we do have to be aware of what the what the uh, enemy is promulgating, um, because we don't need to we don't want to be foolish to what the enemy schemes are. We want to be wise to it. But beyond that, I would urge you to be very cautious of who you're listening to, because they don't want you having hope. Um, and uh, so. Please be very discerning of who you're listening to and all the things out there because there is disinformation on both sides. We know it, and that's why I'm not quite ready to say certain things here until I'm more confident in the information. So, um, But I will just tell you, things are happening. I do believe that uh, things will ultimately turn out to be okay. But I want to leave you on a final note, and I believe, again, I'm going off of memory, but I believe his name is Scott McKay. He said on a, tonight, on a broadcast earlier tonight on his respective show that uh, he is hearing from his sources to get ready, potentially for a week or two week lockdown deal. So, so, the, so the good guys can go out there and take care of whatever uprising may, may, may or may not occur. He doesn't even know if that's true, but it's best to be on the side of caution to which I agree. We don't want to be in fear. That's, that, doesn't, that doesn't accomplish anything. Just be vigilant, be prepared. Um, and on a separate note, I will also just say, here in North Carolina, we're now under a modified stay-at-home order. Uh, after 10 p.m., we're supposed to stay at home, except for certain exemptions, until 5 a.m., uh, you know, but every night, at least until early January. But I still go out after 10 p.m., and I encourage you to do the same thing, because no governor can ever tell you that you do not have the right to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. These governors are acting so tyrannical now. They are exceeding their authority. I shared a meme some days ago on, on my Facebook, and I'll just repeat at least the essence of it. If a governor is ignoring the Constitution, ignore the governor. So, uh, I'm wearing a shirt that says, Don't Tread on Me. I went to a quick trip in Lake Wally, South Carolina. That's only, you know, a dozen or so miles from here, give or take. And I got me some coffee late tonight. This was after 11 o'clock uh, here at night. And um, I went to pay for it. And the, the clerk basically said, I like your shirt. So um, I do believe that more people are awake than what the 
than what the mainstream media is um, allowing people to think. I believe that the silent majority is bigger, bigger and broader than you can possibly imagine. And I just want you want to kind of leave you on a good note that things are going to work out, I believe. God is in control. The patriots are in full control of America, under God, that is. Um, and we're going to be okay. I truly believe that. You have nothing to worry about. Yes, pray. Pray. I need to pray more myself. But that's what we can and should do. But do not worry. The mainstream media wants you to give up. But as the Founding Fathers put it, we were going to have to, basically they foresaw that we would have to one day fight for our freedoms again. That's exactly what we're dealing with right now. We are in the Second American, um, a second American Revolution. And I don't know how to uh, put that better than that. But just understand, we are in the Patriots under, the Patriots, um, the Patriots under God are in full control. So, and by the Patriots, I'm referring to Trump and his administration. So... All right, everyone, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. My thanks to David again for uh, for his weather report. And on that note, I'm going to sign off, and I will be back on pretty soon, coming days, certainly. And um, God bless each and every one of you, and um, I'll see you right back here again next time. Have a good night, everyone.